coming up on Theater Talk. And it's, it's always great to get to revisit something because you really don't revisit it. You, you just get to grow more, you know, because it's not the same river. The river's been flowing, and, mm -hmm. and the world changes around the river. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation and Paul Bungert and Alan Lane. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. So, Michael, I am delighted that one of my very favorite plays from last season is back at second stage right now. Between Riverside, Riverside and Crazy, Crazy, the play is called, by uh, one of our favorite playwrights, Mr. Stephen Adley Gurgis, who wrote Mother with a hat, you know, played near and dear to my heart. <laughs> Welcome uh, back to Theater Talk, Stephen. Thank you. It stars uh, uh, Susan, one of our favorite, favorite actors. The day of favorites. Uh, Stephen McKinley <laughs> Henderson, who we have seen in uh, Fences, all the great August Wilson plays, and it's always have, good and, to have you with and us. And Dracula. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Was that the off-Broadway Dracula? No, 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 no. no, no. This <laughs> was uh, Frank Wildhorn's Dracula. Oh, I oh. forgot about Dracula that. Dracula the Sorry. Musical. That's Van Helsing, right? Van Helsing, yes. <laughs> with the, oh, my God. And another favorite um, New York uh, theater personality of ours, Austin Pendleton, who has directed Between Riverside and Crazy. Welcome, uh, all of you, to Theater Talk. Thank you. All right, uh, so, Stephen, for people who haven't seen the play, can you tell us a little bit what it's about and what sort of inspired you to write it? What's behind the, the, right, the right. play itself? I think the play came from two, two different things. On the one hand, there was a, a case in the 90s um, where a, a white cop had shot a black cop. It was the color of the day case. And um, it always stuck with me, and I always knew I wanted to write about it in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. And then at the same time, uh, my mother passed away, and uh, I moved in with my dad, and uh, and uh, I lived with him uh, the night she died uh, until he died four years later. And during that time, we had a we had a a lot of colorful house guests, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, those two ideas sort of came together. When I was uh, visiting Steve, because we're real close, and uh, and I kind of said to myself, "Oh yeah, like I better, I want to do a lot of plays with Steve. We've only done one, so I better pick it up." So I started writing two plays, and this is the one that that uh, that came first, and we ha hopefully have another one. Yeah. But it's sort of like you know, you so got you a wrote, national you treasure that you're like hanging out, yes. having drinks with on your couch. You want to. Get him well, off know, the couch and, and. Were you one of those strange people who crashed into his? No, not at, all, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I did. I did come through the house once, and I did get to see his father one time at a lab meeting once. But uh, but uh, Stephen came to uh, Buffalo where I live, you know, and uh, and he saw me walking with a cane, and he and he said, "What what's that about?" And I said, "Well, man, I just got diagnosed with this thing," and I said, "You know, I'm just slowing down, man. It's gonna creep on me." And he says, "Well." I, I got two plays that I, I, I mean I got to hurry up and write these plays. And I thought he was being really nice, you know. But he went and he did it. And and then we did just you know when he just won the Steinberg Award, you know. Yep, so yep. so we read from a, a little bit from the other play, and and people were coming and saying, "Oh my God, when is that one coming?" You know. And I said, "Well, probably quick, man, because uh, but I don't know. But uh, 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 but it's just a joy yep. to get to do and and to do with Austin because." I don't know if our paths would have ever crossed if it had if it had the not first been. time you guys I mean, have worked we, together. Our paths would have crossed, yeah, but it's the first time we worked. We yeah. never would have worked like this, and it's just so. Sometimes you know, sometimes things just that yeah. that synchronicity is just it's right. Is this know? the first of Stevens' plays that you've directed? Yes, the others were directed by Phil Hoffman, who I was right, a, right. a good friend with, and Anna Shapiro, who I'm right. a good friend with. So I know. Um, I, so I've, I think I've seen them all mm. be, between Phil and Anna. Who brought you into this? Neil Peppy? Or, oh, you, you, know, yeah. you know what happened was we, we had a reading down at Lab, and, and Austin was acting in the reading. And the play was good, but it was like developing. I was watching Austin, and he was so free in his acting. And, and I was watching, I was like, it reminds me of something. It reminds me of somebody. And then I realized that it reminded me of Phil Hoffman. And Austin had kind of mentored Phil, gave Phil his first job, and, 
And that, that's why Austin was always at my place, you know. And, and I just looked at it and I felt something and, and I said, why don't I just see if Austin wants to direct his play? I didn't really even know you, but it just felt like the right thing. I felt like this is a family play mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the actors in it basically all are, were close or so were family. And I wanted it that and I felt it was like family by extension and it's become, you know, so I felt right. So, yeah. Stephen, tell us about your character. Uh, the the angry just, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, well, the, the facts is, you know, he's a, a, an ex-cop, retired now uh, because of a, a, an incident, a shooting incident, and um, and his and his wife passed away uh, during this time. And when we first did the show, I really had the wife at the center, and they, that was the central motiv motivation for the guy. Uh, and and now and it's it's always great to get to revisit something because you really don't revisit it. You you just get to grow more, you know, because it's not the same river. The river's been flowing, and mm -hmm. and the world changes around the river, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now it's so much about the sun. It's so much about making sure that I can leave something that that that, that the kid is taking care of because I he's a guy that really sees himself exiting. You know what I mean? He really does see that this is the last act. We meet him and he's in a wheelchair. And because then, he wants to be. Yes, because he wants to be. And then unexpected things happen, remarkable. Unexpected, happen. yeah. But he can walk around. It's just yeah. that the wheelchair was his wife's. Yes. And, uh, and, and he, it's like. A, he said, he's sedentary. He's, he's very, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, what's the disease where you don't go out of the house at all? Uh, agoraphobia? Yeah. Yeah, but he, he's, he's very close to that. He just does not go out. People go get things, bring them back. Right, right. He's really disengaging from the world in some ways. Yes, very much. Well, so. or, and also at the same time, holding court with the whole world. Yeah, right. <laughs> Coming <laughs> well, to yeah, him. Yeah, from he, his, he wants from to his have his here. way before he leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, you know? yeah, right. He definitely, yeah. yeah. So, what is there, um, You've directed many, many plays, many different kind of plays. Is there uh, the same approach to all playwrights, or when you tackle Stephen's play, the Stephen Adley Gurgis kind of play, yeah. is there some adjustment you have to make as a director in dealing with his language, his characters? His well, a lot of those d decisions have to do with casting. Mm. When I was hired for the job, the one person who was in it already was Stephen, and of course I know his work. Mm -hmm. But the... Um, I'd seen it a lot, you know, as as everybody, and uh, I was very excited about that. But then, when, in terms of casting the other roles, I said to, to this Stephen over here, I said, "You cast it because you know your actors." Mm. And I'd seen all these Phil Hoffman and Anna uh, productions. The Anna production of the mother, <laughs> where the hat I saw was the one at Steppenwolf, which she did right. after Broadway. Right. And. There were very, the actors in all those shows were, A, they were wonderful, mm -hmm. and they clearly had a feeling for Stephen's language and for his people and for his, the, the circumstances of his plays. And you can't, you can't teach that. Right, right. And, um, so in the case with his plays, it really is 90% of the directing is the casting. Yeah, Kazan used to say that, that, uh, that that's, that's about 90% of directing. It is and it isn't. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it wouldn't be the same, you know, Austin's made it. And especially now, I notice so much from the summer into, into this production, uh, I just kind of blown away. I was away for a few days and I come in how everything feels so much more rich and lived in and, and uh, the most encouraging things it feels like, and there's more to discover, and there's mm -hmm. more to discover, mm -hmm. and there's more to discover, and it's a real blessing, but you gotta have someone who's interested in continuing the journey of discovery. Right. So that's like, the Austin thing, that he's, he's never satisfied, he keeps going. I think he's none creating. of us are, Good. you know? There's every once in a while we're like, okay, really. can you be satisfied? You know, well, can we right. stop, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, but, but you can't get too confident though, right? Yeah. Right. But, but it's an inspiring thing. I mean, what he's got there in the text is in inspiring. And, and that's the thing about Austin, because he'll come in in the day and you can just see it in his eyes. Ha ha, I got something for you today. You know? <laughs> and you know, you sort of say, okay, you know. <laughs> is every idea brilliant or sometimes like, oh. Well, you know, you, you got to have a lot of ideas to have great ideas. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And, uh, right. But, but no, I mean, I, yeah. quite, quite honestly, I mean, it, it really is, it's down now to, the fine tuning, you know. I mean, yeah. he, he, he doesn't come with something that's. Uh, it's not just an experiment. It's 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 based on and inspired by the success of a previous moment or something, you right. know. 
Right. So and he there's something that he sees clearer than he you know more more clearly. You see things clearly when you watch a performance and you say, oh, something starts to happen out of what you've been working on that that develops out of what you have been working on, and then you say, oh wait, now that I actually see that happening, take that another step further, and this would this and something else will happen. Right. But certain that there's terrific writing there's terrific playwriting where that does not happen hmm. but it has to be really terrific playwriting for that to happen when do you Stephen because uh, I know you you work with kind of a, mm -hmm. a family sort of of, of actors and directors the lab, yeah. And, yeah the lab and all that when do you first show someone something you've written um, as early as possible. Really? You don't yeah. husband it? You don't wait till it's perfect and polished? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm kind of holding back on them at the end for these rewrites. But no, in general, uh, you know, if I got 20 pages, uh, sometimes I don't actually, what I do more often than, than not is not write 20 pages, but, but I'll call up Steve and I'll call up a few people. I'm like, hey, can you do a reading two weeks from Friday? So he's like, well, I'm in Buffalo, but you know I'll be down. Are you going to stay at the house? Yeah, I stay at the house, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, Austin, can you call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's going to be a reading on this date, and and most of the time I haven't written anything. But you give me. But now a I know Steve's coming from Buffalo. <laughs> Austin's coming from here. You know, Mike, and that you know, and and because once you, once I have, something to begin with, then I find that there's a community that, that's, you know, encouraging you to keep to sort of keep going. We had you back in 2003 with Our Lady of 121st Street. Yeah. And I never forget, you told us the story about how you were writing it, Phil Hoffman was directing it, and then we said, well, why did you finish the play? And it was because Phil Hoffman said to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and it was really like I didn't want to let him down. I didn't want to let John Ortiz down. I remember they were like, if we don't finish in two, if you, if you don't have a second act in two days, because we were in tech, we can't go up. And, uh, but then I remember Phil, crying and saying but if you can't finish it it's okay it's okay and that was the part that really ripped me apart you know more than the threat was uh you know uh i was like i can't let these guys this is my family you know and that's really how that's the main motivation <laughs> it's to this day is 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 not letting down a family and that's why i want I like plays to be family. Even in the TV thing, when I work in TV, I, I find a way to make it like there's someone I can't let down. Were you showing Phil your work up until towards the end of his life? Uh, you know, the end of his life, uh, he was not associating Not with well, me. yeah. Yeah, he kind of, he, I think he kind of cut out, well, I know he cut out everybody who wouldn't, stand for what the hell was yeah, he was so sick was yeah. going on yeah. yeah but uh you know so then you had to find other people yeah i mean i had already we had already i had already worked with anna yeah so so uh i had already crossed the bridge like i worked with phil for five plays i think yeah. a, a dozen years so i'd already crossed the bridge of of working with someone else which thank god i mean that was a, a kind of a a blessing it, it was it, but it was more like you know the work that we did, it'll, it'll continue, you know, that, you know, I think about him every day, but it's more, uh, it's more, you know, his kids and, 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 uh, you know, it's, I lost both my parents and that's hard and, and, uh, this is, this is, uh, it's also hard because you expect, you don't want to, but you know, you're going to bury your parents if everything goes well and. But you don't think you're going to bury your best friend or your... You know, I always thought that I, I was certain that he would outlive me. And the funny thing is, is that he was certain that he would out, <laughs> outlive me. Although clearly from other <laughs> with the hat, you've dealt with addicts a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, you know, you, you know, you get past the age of 21. And uh, if you're still partying, you start to learn that the world subdivides, right? <laughs> and you have like, you know, eventually at a certain point, People either get sober or don't, and the people that can be recreational are recreational, and it's funny. It's it's not funny, and no. uh, and and the older you get, the more and more you realize you can't do anything except reserve judgment. 
you know, because it's so, but... Uh, did you have your wild days when you were a young actor, Austin? And, uh, young actor? <laughs> this is, uh, last week. <laughs> right, right, right. He's right. Yeah. I mean, because I always talk to, uh, you know, we, I remember having conversations with Brian Dennehy over the years, yeah. and like Chris Plummer, too. He said, when you're young, I think it was Chris Plummer who said to me, you know, when you're young, kind of the mark of your manhood was you would do Hamlet and in the matinee, and then you'd go out and you'd have two bottles of Bordeaux with your friends, and then you'd go and you'd give an even better performance at night. He said, you can do that when you're young, and then all of a sudden something hits and you can't, carry on like that anymore. One thing I don't think I've ever done was do anything before a performance. Mm. Now, once the performance is over, the evening performance is over. <laughs> the fun began. That's another right. story. Right. But, um, but I've always been terrified. of. Um, uh, it's hard to be on stage with someone who's been either drinking or using. It's mm -hmm. very hard. Well, no, I should be fair. Sometimes it's wonderful. Certain actors know where to take that. <laughs> you know, I, I should say that. Yeah. But, but sometimes it's hard. Yeah. So I've always had a fear of even when you go to a reception before a performance and they say, oh, just have a little wine. I just get, I get frightened that I won't know what I'm doing on stage. Mm. Or I won't know that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> I mean, I'm familiar with the sensation of not knowing what I'm doing on stage. Stephen, you were nodding in agreement there when it's hard to work with somebody. Who, oh, yeah. Have you had that experience with the... Uh, yeah, you know, I have. And, and, and I've had the mm. other experience, as you said, where someone who, they, they're on their game. That's, they can handle it. Yeah. But then you've got the people who think they can. Yeah. You know, and right. think they're having a great performance. Yeah, right. And, and think that the audience appreciates that they're a little looser. Mm -hmm. And you know, so what do you I, do? How do you how do you handle a situation like that? You, I you cling just get out to of the, the way? text. I cling to the text. I cling to the play. I cling to the story. You know, try to stay mm -hmm. right there. I mean, it's the, the best you can do. You know, and try to bring that other actor back who may be flying all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I don't make that my goal. I mean, but I, I just hope that being an anchor will will anchor you. I'm, I'm going to be here when you want to be here in the play. This is where I'm going to be. You know? Right, right. And come on back. But you can't yeah. turn it into helping them because you've just left the play too, you know. So, Interesting. Uh, but, you know, if, if, you, if you got a different way to do it in Peoria than you do it in New York, you don't deserve to do it either place as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you just got to serve the play and you got to and, and, and join the family to, to serve the play. And, right. and it's such a wonderful thing. It's the biggest high. It's the best high you'll have, man. Right, yeah. right. That, you know, there. Now, after the show's over, maybe there's somewhere to go. You know. <laughs> right. But you right. can't have yeah. a better experience on stage yeah. than really occupying that play and, and joining the people out there who are watching it and getting their contact high <laughs> off what you're doing. But I can see though why you can fall, a, a performer can fall into the trap as many have with uh, drug use or alcohol because when you have that great moment on the stage and you've given that great performance in front of an audience and then it's gone and there's that, I don't know, sometimes it's hard an, to come an, down an emptiness off of, is, yeah. is suddenly everything's just shut off like that and you have to, to bring yourself down somehow. Someday. You know, Pete Townsend of The Who what became a heroin addict in his 40s. And they asked him how that could happen, and he said, because when you perform, when you're done, you have to go from 99 to zero. Yeah. Peter O'Toole's ex-wife wrote a book, and she was talking about what you were referring to, that time in London, well, the Young Turks, and they all were all like, we go out and we drink in the pub, and then we go do our play, Richard yeah. Harris, and da da, da 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 And she said, you know, the funny thing is, is that, is that that's what the public would see, and Peter would go and have the pub and have the drink and then do the show. But what they didn't know was that after the show, he would come home to the house and stay up all night obsessively working, 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 so that he could go back into London the next day and act like, oh, yeah, it's, not, oh, it's just something I, yeah. I do. Yeah. Huh. I mean, I think people that care yeah. about the work yeah. Care, yeah. 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 care about... I remember John Cullum did, yeah. um, he did Camelot with uh, Richard Burton. Mm. And Burton, you know, would yeah. often show up drunk. Yeah. And right. usually he could get through it. Yes. But he said one night Burton came in and he was swaying. And we just thought this is going to be, this is a bad scene. And Burton came out to deliver monologue or a song or something. And he looks over at Cullum, who's playing a young knight another night. And he says, Sir, Sir Stephen, Sir Austin, come kneel and they kneel and then he balanced himself on their heads and he did the oh. song so he didn't fall down oh god <laughs> so oh, there's god. a way of doing it um before i let you guys go since i have uh, three very prominent people in theater i'm very curious to know 
uh, very, very early on in your life, what was the show, play, movie you saw that opened up this world for you? That made you decide you wanted to be on the stage or be an actor? Was it was a performance you saw? I remember it explicitly. When I was growing up in, in, in Ohio, my mom was involved with a community theater group. She had been a professional actress and director before she married my dad, and then she settled down, and then they started after World War II, this community theater. And about 10 years into that, and they would rehearse sometimes in the evening in our living room. Anyway, around eight or nine years into their time, and they're still there, the, the group is still there an excellent group. She was an excellent director and actress, and they got other people who were very good. I saw, having never seen or read, they did a very credible production of A Streetcar Named Desire, a play I did not know. Mm. And I remember saying to my cousin when she and I went home, when I took her back to her house, I was 14. She was 15. I said, I didn't know you could see a play where you act, actually would worry about somebody afterward, <laughs> um, uh, the leading character. Yeah, play. Yeah. yeah. It was such a, it was a revelation. <laughs> and I, and the, I think the die was cast. And for you, Steve, you grew up in mm -hmm. Kansas City? Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, a lot of different things came together for me to, to, to feel comfortable on the stage. I just felt comfortable on the stage. But I remember when I got serious about it, uh, and I just thought about it. I had this, this fabulous teacher. I had, I've always had great teachers, great teachers, leaders, directors, playwrights, you know, teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, Gloria Terrell was her name, and uh, is her name. I think she's she's still with us. And we were doing a production of Blues from Mr. Charlie mm -hmm. by James Baldwin, mm -hmm. and she did this thing with this role, Juanita. That and, and I just watched her do it every night, and I just think, how does she go there every night? You know, go to this place, and it took the whole room, and it was cause oriented because we were very much about mission oriented, about you know raising consciousness in the black arts movement and so on and so forth. So it was about getting people out of just the entertainment realm and into the consciousness raising realm, and she just did it, man. I mean, she did it in such an incredible way. And because she encouraged me, mm -hmm. she thought enough of me to think that I should do it embark on this path, you know. And 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 she and her husband, because I was a math major, uh, uh, and and her husband, who was an engineer, and he told me uh, 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 a couple of years ago when I when I uh, 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 was doing fences, he said, you know, man, I, I always go around and I still get give speeches and get kids to go to KU, Kansas University, or to this school or that school. And, and he said, but you're the only guy I ever told to drop out. He said, you're the only guy who was a math major who I ever told, go be an actor. Gloria's right, man. <laughs> Leave it alone. You know, go on and go to, go to that school yeah. in New York. Go. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Yeah. And for, uh, for you, Stephen, growing up in the city, did you yeah. see plays early on? Yeah, or? we didn't have a lot of money for plays. I remember seeing Scapino with Jim Dale when oh, I was yeah. a kid. I had a big impression. Yeah. Yeah. But my mom used to take us to the Regency to see the double features. Mm -hmm. I, I was into this from Good Times and, and the Waltons on TV. You know, I, I get emotionally invested in anything and then I think when I became a little bit older you know it's corny to say but Malkovich and Burn This just changed oh, my yeah. world yeah. and then a year or two later what really was uh, Ruffalo in This Is Our Youth Yeah. and I was in acting school at the time and then I was like I'm gonna do anything I have to to get as good as I can and and then you know and now everything I mean I can st I still can eat, I still can escape into that world and my favorite thing whether it's you know it happens mostly in theaters where you see something and afterwards like you just like you're with friends but you don't want to talk you know you want to just sort of go off like it's almost be like in an hour I'll meet you but when you just uh you started did you want to be an actor first yes yeah I started writing when I got involved with Labyrinth Theater Company and we be quickly became like multidisciplinary encouraging multidisciplinary and stuff and you know I wrote a little one act and everybody seemed to laugh at the funny parts and <laughs> engage in the sad parts and then they kind of just forced me to 
keep writing. That's but I want to congratulate you on your performance in the Academy Award nominated Birdman. Birdman, you know? Yes, I think so. I am the good neighbor. Yes, you are. Okay. Would you be tempted to do more more acting, though? It's what I still what I love to do the most. And I'm always saying to myself, all right, I'm going to make a plan so I can just act for a while. It doesn't happen. Now the thought of, I was thinking about it last night, is terrifying. <laughs> and that means like, it's now or never, run back into that water yeah. or yeah. live a sad, <laughs> as, as an award-winning playwright. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Or make a lot of other actors very, very happy. Yeah. 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 That's a that's, good component. Uh, that's, that's, all right. The play is uh, Between Riverside and Crazy at Second Stage. It stars uh, the great Stephen McKenley Henderson, written by Stephen Adley Gurgis and directed by Austin Pendleton. Thanks, guys, for being our guest on that. And Austin, I look forward to the Hamlet you're directing at CSC with Peter Sarsgaard. Oh, yeah. That's a strange play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good description of Hamlet. That's a strange play. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, plus public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. Welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you and good night.